right. So it's uh, 9.32. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, join us. Oh, there's Bridget. There we go. Hey, everyone. Hello, Bridget. Hello, Lana. All right. So I'll call the order at 9.32. Two. And uh, we'll start the uh, Wilmington Tree Commission. So welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to a nice, brisk morning. It uh, definitely feels like a fall morning. So <laughs> thank you all for joining today. Uh, what I'd like to do first is um, like the, does anybody have any comments on the meeting minutes from last meeting? I do. Um, under my report, there's an A, but there's no, um, there's no text. <laughs> All right. So whatever I said Typo uh, on my part. has disappeared into history. <laughs> I noticed. Okay. So shall we uh, wait until next meeting to approve the uh, notes or should we approve the notes with the addendum to add whatever? And I think you can do, you can, you can we have the recording. So I yeah, can, you can approve can it with the addendum or whatever. Yeah. All right. So what, um, what we're going to do is I, I move to approve the minutes with the added information from the Alliance for Cape Fear Trees, uh, Dan's report. Um, do I hear a second? A second. Okay. Any discussion? Anybody have any comments? All right, all in favor, say aye. aye. Raise your hand if you're on aye. the phone. <laughs> all right. So motion approves. Uh, meeting minutes have been approved. Um, we do have a new commissioner uh, who has joined us, uh, Terry uh, Parham. Is that correct? Aram. Parham. Uh, Terry Parham is with us today, and uh, we'd like to welcome her to the uh, – to the Wilmington Tree Commission, and if you just a couple comments about who you are, what you want to do, and okay. why you joined. Sure. Um, actually, I'm really not sure how I got on this committee, <laughs> but I'm happy to be here and to contribute any way that I possibly can. So uh, this is very unusual for me. Um, I was born and raised in Wilmington, so I've seen more trees go than I've seen come, unfortunately. So we'll just see how it goes, and I hope I can be some help and contribute something. So, hi, all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate your uh, help and support going forward. Sure, thank you. All right, and then uh, next item on the agenda is I'll turn it over to Sally and Aaron about um, the Urban Forest Master Plan and uh, what do we, where we are and uh, where we're going. I uh, apologize, just trying to get here, here with you. I'm trying to, got double boat this morning. I'm trying to do two things at once here. Let's see if I can run through this. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thanks, okay. Aaron. Okay. Uh, Haley, appreciate you putting that up for me. Um, so, yeah, we just run through a, a quick update on the master plan. Uh, first slide you see here is just a um, rehash of the 11 recommendations. Um, I'll run through them real quick. This is just the, the broad overview of the recommendations. Now, each one of these was broken down quite a bit more. Um, if you look at the full UFMP, um, there's a lot more detail uh, broken down in different steps on these. But the, the overall recommendations, see there is completing the tree inventory, uh, updating tree canopy assessment, um, establishing proactive management program for trees, uh, developing strengthen relationships in part with partners, uh, ensure Wilmington's regulations, BMPs, and guidelines are in place, uh, support tree growth, uh, canopy growth and preservation, focus tree planting and care in locations to advance equity and sustainability goals, uh, develop and implement public engagement outreach education plan, dedicate city staff to support urban forest operations and education, um, and I think a good portion of number eight there was uh, looking at potential uh, additional employees uh, and staff for various functions within our division. 
Uh, number nine, create and implement a program to monitor and address environmental threats. Uh, improve communication, collaboration, coordination among city departments and outside entities. Develop a strategy to manage wood waste. And identify the highest and best use of that wood waste. Um, go ahead, next slide. So, just a quick update on accomplishments. Uh, these the numbers on on these items correspond with the numbers in the first slide there the, with their eleven recommendations. Uh, so the first one, completing the tree inventory. Um, we are still looking at uh, budget and grant funding uh, to help complete that item. Uh, so that was kind of ongoing. I uh, don't have anything set in place yet uh, for that budget. We are working towards that. Uh, number two, update tree so, canopy assessment. Aaron, what, yes, sir. What, uh, what type of money are you talking about here as far as in order to complete this inventory, um, and this is for all the city, not just the. Uh, we did did the the nineteen forty inventory. Yes, the, yeah, the original the original uh, survey uh, for the master plan was just the nineteen forty five corporate limits. Um, so I think we we're looking to finish out street trees. Uh, Sally, if you, I don't know if you remember, I think we were looking at another thirty or forty thousand dollars, I believe, something like that. Thirty, or four, 30 to forty thousand trees is what's estimated to remain street trees. So this is not included. Well, that, yeah, Pardon. thirty, thirty to forty thousand. I think was the citywide total that we were estimating. So um, we have a recent um, cost estimate from um, from a consultant to complete the inventory and also include tree keeper, which is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and it's in the three hundred thousand dollar range. So okay, um, well, I apologize. I haven't, I haven't seen that. Okay. When do sure. we know about that? Well, I can give that update now. Uh, or sure. No, you can wait. Okay. No, no, do, well, do it now. Well, I mean, it's it, under point we're talking one, so. about it. Yeah. Um, so uh, during the um, North Carolina Urban Forest Conference, we um, got that update from the state. So the state of North Carolina is administering federal. Um, Inflation Reduction Act dollars for um, urban forestry related items and street tree inventory is like number one on their list. So I'm uh, working with our internal grant staff to put that application together. I believe the first pass is in January. Yeah. So um, when I can't answer that, but I'm pretty optimistic about our chances. I don't know if we'll get fully funded, but certainly if they support our program, we should be able to start, you know, hopefully can get approval to phase it in or maybe do it all at once. It sounds like they've got quite a lot of funding av available, like six or $7 million. So I, I guess no promises at this point, but we've got a really good um, option that's directly related. So oh, great. I think, I mean, because the Alliance is very interested in that because we, our first year tracking all of our trees on Google spreadsheet, it's kind of like that is not scalable. So um, I guess my only comment is that if we get tree keeper, I would like to get it in a way that we have it on an ongoing basis, not just to complete the inventory and then have right. it go away again. Right. The other question I wanted to ask, and I don't know if it's appropriate time or not, but um, we've talked about the inventory being limited to the 1945 limits. And then we've talked, to, we've emphasized that a number of times. Um, what is like your, your opinion, Sally, and your opinion, Aaron, what will be the big differences when we expand that, when we expand that area? So I know one has been observed that crate myrtles are like 29% of our canopy. And I think the feeling, the, the impression I've gotten from both of you is that crate myrtles are not as highly represented in areas outside 1945 limits. Do you have any other like sort of suspicions or about any major differences in those other areas, outlying areas? Yeah, I think the biggest difference you're going to see is once we get outside of those areas, um, the density of street trees is going to change uh, significantly. Uh, down. Once we're up. Down, uh, down. Once we get outside of the main, you know, the historical <laughs> Wilmington area. Uh, so areas like Sunset Park um, is going to be pretty heavily. It's, the density there in that whole area will probably be the same or roughly the same as what we saw in the 45 limits. Um, to get out into uh, areas east of uh, uh, Burton Hill Creek there, um, you know, parts of Forest Hills, you've got fairly high densities there. Um, those will probably be similar 
in nature, density, and species wise. Um, but once you get outside of those neighborhoods, you get into areas that were developed um, under the county when they were not part of the city. Um, so those streets were developed to different standards. So they weren't really designed. A lot of them were not designed to accept street trees. Um, and they're, multi, you know, either open ditches for stormwater, underground stormwater utilities, uh, all kinds of communication, power utilities underground um, that prevent us from planting trees in the right of way in a lot of those places. Um, so you'll have a lower density in all of the air, older areas that were developed when they were outside of the city limits. Uh, but then were subsequently annexed in. Um, but then newer neighborhoods, newer planned neighborhoods uh, that were developed uh, under city code, um, we'll see higher tree densities because street trees were required. Uh, and those were built to handle and accept those street trees. So it'll be a little bit of a difference, but I think overall you're going to see a general, outside the 45 limits with a couple of exceptions, you're going to see a general decrease in the density um, and the um, species makeup will be a little bit different as well. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a good answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so go back to number two right up here. Uh, updating the tree canopy assessment. We did that. Um, our IT staff was able to do that. We actually got that completed um, just before uh, the UFMP went to council for final approval. Um, and you see here the, the decrease, the overall decrease, 48.1% down to 41.4. Uh, that was from 2016 maps to I think 2022 maps. Um, I, uh, could be wrong, but I think the that represents a 16% decrease, I believe. Yes. Um, so we had, we had Hurricane Florence and a couple of very big uh, development, like large-scale developments that were part of that. Um, they, both of those would have contributed significantly to that, that decrease. Um, so that has been done. Um, and we'll hopefully, uh, every time that we get updated aerial maps, we'll be able to kind of follow up and keep track of that every uh, three or four years or so. Uh, number four, they're developing strengthening relationships. Uh, we're still working through the MOU uh, Memorandum of Understanding with the Alliance for Cape Fear Trees. Um, so that's still in process. Uh, number five, ensuring uh, regulations, BMPs, guidelines are in place. Uh, we're in the process of updating technical standards and specification manual uh, to help with that goal. Tom, will we have time to talk about that later in the meeting? Because I'm Aaron, I'm really interested in trying to collaborate with you on that number five item. Uh, yes, yeah. They'll uh, once once the city staff gets through. The tech standards and everything, all of those are going out for public comment, I believe, before they're finalized. It's actually, it's out right now, and public comment is due by the end of the month. So um, have, yeah, go ahead, Sally. Hi, I might have a, an update on that. So I'm, I'm trying to get straight with just internally. Um, I don't think that the landscape section has been released yet. It's, it's just the first four chapters is all they've released. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to um, add... I say I agree with. You. I don't think landscape has been released yet. I think that's one of the final two chapters. Um, it has not been released yet. Yes, because I mean we we want to be able to obviously have feedback for that too. So, um, it I think the one the deadline for the end of the month is not the lands the trees Correct. specific chapters, and I think yeah. they're looking at the end of the year for that. So, yeah. so how, how much a little bit of time? Right, right. But the first four chapters still have a lot of concepts in there. Um, that pretty much ignore trees or deprioritize trees in planning processes. Um, and so we've got a small team in the Alliance that's, you know, been looking at the standards and, you know, looking at suggested, you know, wording changes. But, you know, I was really glad this meeting popped up today because the last thing I would want us to do as that meddling nonprofit, as Dan has called us before, would be to suggest something that you two, especially Sally and Aaron, thought was not technically defensible, totally off the wall, right? Um, and so what I and and you know, I also don't think it's a really good idea that we just throw an email over the fence on October 31st with, you know, the Alliance email on it. I would really rather that, 
whatever our thoughts are that we actually have some discussion so that you guys go, yeah, yeah, we think the Alliance did a good job and we don't disagree with anything they've suggested. So no surprises. And so I, I, w I guess I was looking for some advice. We got not quite two weeks until the end of the month to respond to the first four chapters. What do you suggest we do? I mean, I'm more than happy to meet with you guys in the next couple of weeks and yeah. get your feedback and, okay. and provide some, you know, from our perspective, what we think might be defensible or reasonable okay. from, you know, a, that perspective. And I think it's fine if, you know, we disagree and you're like, we're moving this ahead anyway. That's, you know, that's your prerogative. Okay. So, I mean, I'd be happy to make time for that. All right. Well, yeah, okay, if, so if, if you've got a, if you got a list of concerns and stuff that you want us to look at, just send us a list and we can definitely look at, uh, look at it and, you know, provide any, I guess guidance, if that's what you're looking for there. But I mean, the the public comment is just that; it's for public comments. So, I mean, they'll they want to hear everything you got to say. Yeah. So, so Aaron, right now I'm nagging people. Okay, I've gotten feedback from Bill Jane, and you can pretty much guess what that says. Um, I spent a fair amount of time going through it, and of course, I'm not an arborist, but I was a project manager for DuPont. And so I'm very familiar with engineering standards and how they actually dictate in the weeds, how things get done. Um, Jim Gregory, I'm still kind of waiting back for some feedback from him, but what I will do is I'll collate everything into, this is kind of what we're looking at. And then if we can schedule a meeting, I'd be happy to come over here and we can just chat about it. Cause I would really you know, we, I, I think I said this to you before, Sally, right? That we can say things maybe you guys can't, right? Because we're just that meddling nonprofit. We're the public. So we, you know, might want to put something out there, but I would want it to be 100% technically defensible. Um, practicality might be the place where we might, you know, kind of, but I think it might be a worthwhile discussion. And I just want to follow up. I was testing this. And Brian Chambers confirmed that this was a good place for us to actually insert ourselves, responding during this public comment period to the technical standards. So I went back to my little internal committee and said, are we going to, because like I said, I haven't heard from anybody. I've been nagging them for almost two months. And I got absolutely yes, especially from Margie, that yes, we are going to take advantage of this opportunity. And provide some input and hopefully shift the narrative and the paradigm a little bit more to prioritizing preservation of existing tree canopy and treating specimen trees as just as important to work around as underground utilities and everything else. So, and Bill Jane's comment was, you know, anytime you establish a minimum, you know, the minimum requirement that becomes the ceiling, doesn't it? Because that tells a developer the absolute minimum he has to do. And so that's all he's going to do. Um, and so we're maybe pushing back on some of that wording, but you know, I, I, I don't want to make your, your guys' jobs more difficult anyway. Okay. So I think that's all I need on that. Yes. So go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Next one. I think this. Okay, uh, keep going. Just a couple more here. Uh, number eight, dedicating city staff to support urban forest operations and education. Um, one thing we've been able to do for certain uh, is minor thing, but not really a minor thing because uh, it it says a lot about uh, what we do and uh, what our people do here. Uh, we did change the couple of position titles. Uh, we've changed my title uh, from forestry management supervisor back to city arborist officially. Um, you know, when I started the position with city arborist and it got changed, uh, some department changes, uh, but we have formally changed that back to city arborist. And then our tree crew supervisor uh, position, um, which was most recent, is vacant now, but was most recently filled by uh, Kelly Blair. Um, we did change that instead of tree crew supervisor, it is assistant city arborist uh, to more reflect, more accurately reflect the responsibilities of that position. Um, and there are still some uh, other internal uh, position, operational things that we're looking at, possibly some new positions, uh, but we're not uh, really prepared to discuss those yet. Uh, but there are some things on the table, somewhat on the table at least. Um, hey, Aaron, um, what, is, what is the... Obviously, it's an intentional change of title. What is 
what is that supposed to emphasize in terms of like change in responsibilities? It doesn't necessarily change any of the responsibilities of the position. We change the working titles for the two positions. Uh, it's more, it's more to accu- accurately reflect um, the industry standard for what we do. Okay. So yes, it didn't, didn't necessarily didn't change any responsibility of yeah. the two positions. It's just a more accurate description. Yeah, and at the, we also we're trying to be intentional for recruitment as well as you can imagine. Yep. Yep. Uh, the Arboros is a is a pretty um, key role for our operations, and so we wanted to be able to get some language out there that resonated with folks in the industry and across maybe even the country um, to attract really good talent. So, City Arboros, Dennis and City Arboros resonates more. I was just with curious that caliber of candidate. Yeah, because Arboros is very tree specific, mm-hmm. and obviously, Urban Forest is very it's sort of wider range kind of. And I just was curious if that reflected a change in the city's thinking about how they manage trees and urban forest. Not really. It sounds like the answer is no, no, no. Our, our position and how we, how we go about things has not changed. Like I said, the title change is just, it's, it's more to in line with the industry standards. And when you're, if you're recruiting, like I said, like I said, if you're recruiting for these positions, like the assistant city arborist, what it currently is, um, we're in the process of uh, doing interviews to fill that role, uh, right now. Um, but when it was advertised the last time that it, that it was vacant, we advertised as you know tree crew supervisor. Um, the qualifi- the people with the qualifications that we're looking for are not when they're looking for open positions. They're not searching tree, tree, tree crew supervisor. They're looking for city arborist, assistant city arborist, things along those lines. Um, and it did make a difference in the number of candidates that we received uh, this go around versus last. Aaron, if I, if I might add one more thing for the good of the commission, um, the core mission of our forestry operations team is operations. So making sure that we have, we're planting, pruning, removing hazard trees, that, that is our core mission. So we got to make sure we get that right. Um, all of these other things are incredibly important too, but it's the things that you've seen us working hard to build capacity, um, maybe struggle a little bit with capacity, um, and we're continuing to work towards. Okay. Just want to make that clear. So uh, how does the s- city sustainability manager fit into this within the city of Wilmington and trees? I be perfectly honest, I don't have an answer for that offhand. I'm just curious if there's any any role here that the sustainability. You know, I think that's a really, really good question. I mean, you know, when the county was looking at um, the West Bank um, place type decision, and then they had a uh, joint meeting with their planning group to look at their 2050 comprehensive plan. And one of the things they immediately jumped on was the fact that the new sustainability manager that they had hired for the county needed to have a more key role in driving some of that. So, And then I found out that CFPUA has just hired a new sustainability manager. She's starting very, very soon. I think they're mid, mid-November. Yeah, I think if you... Uh, I'd have to go back and look at, again. I don't know right offhand, but I believe in these within these eleven uh, recommendations of the UFMP. I think if we go in to the UFMP itself and look at the breakdown, uh, the expansion of these eleven recommendations, I think and probably at least at least one of them, maybe multiples. Um, there's probably some cross up where the sustainability uh, issue would come into play um, with our sustainability person. Um, yeah, I, I don't have the copy of it in front of me. I'd, I'd look it up real quick. But um, I think if we get in there and break down, there, that probably is in there. Actually, I'm pretty sure it is in there. I just don't know exactly which one of the 11 it would fall under right now. Well, I, I guess my other question is, does a sustainability manager, um, has, has that person been given the UFMP to review and read? <laughs> uh, um, yes, uh, our sustainability person actually was part of the uh, review team when we were building the UFMP. Okay. Gotcha. So they, they were involved. I just, gotcha. Again, just, again, my apology. I, I, I still am still trying to, <laughs> even as long as we've had this so far, um, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the ins and outs of all these 11 recommendations and kind of kind of cross reference. So I, my apology, I can't tell you which one offhand, but that person right. was involved in the development of the plan. So it, it was a thing, is a thing. Um, you just have to dig through and figure out exactly where it fits. 
No, I'm just I'm just trying to say that you know the more people we get involved, the easier the work's going to be. So if the sustainability manager can help support some of these recommendations, I think that will also help you know help to move the urban forest master plan forward. And you know they might also come from a different perspective too. So yes, absolutely. And it, as we start making recommendations or not recommendations we start making requests uh any any city department that would be affected by that um or could support that um we'll certainly yeah. make our best attempt to bring them into into yeah. that request and you know get their support behind it gotcha yeah and again i don't know what the goals of these city sustainability manager are but if, if there's a carbon reduction goal, I mean, adding more trees always helps to reduce carbon. So, yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Not a problem. Uh, so number 10, I uh, believe in improving communication, collaboration, coordination among city departments and outside entities. Um, we are have updated... Some of you may remember the tree and sidewalk conflict study that we did a few years ago. Um, so that was a collaboration between uh, our urban forestry group and the public services group that deals with uh, fixing and installing new sidewalks, um, but a little bit into streets. Um, the uh, I guess the online platform that we use to communicate uh, between those two. Uh, we've tried a couple of different platforms trying to find the best fit for um, marking those locations and adding information to those locations to make the best decision about how to address the, the conflicts um, that is still ongoing. Um, I think we're still working on the latest update to that to see if it's going to fit the bill or if we need to tweak it a little bit more. So uh, it made pretty good progress on that. Um, and again, it's not, not just with the UFMP, but it brings on a, a previous study that we did as well. So it's a, that's a good tie together there. Um, we have implemented uh, here year and a half, two years ago, probably about two years ago now. Um, the fire department uh, has been collaborating with us to respond to after hours tree calls. Um, so uh, get a after hours call from 911 that's tree related. Um, their first response is now to fire instead of directly to our, instead of to our after hours on call person. Um, fire department will respond if it's something small that they can get uh, out of the road, uh, either cutting up or just drag it out of the road. Um, they'll do so and then notify us that we have debris uh, to be picked up at a later at a later time, usually the next day. Um, they, they've got some pretty specific guidelines. If it's laying anything that's laying on a car, um, if it's too big for them to move by hand, you know, it needs heavy equipment, or if it's still suspended in the air, anything touching any kind of wires for their power. Uh, communication lines they kind of steer clear of those and they'll call us in for that but it has been a huge help um and uh has reduced the number of times that our staff has had to come in just in the middle of the night we hours in the morning to get uh minor calls um and fire has been happy to do so um it's been a huge help for us so it's been, it's been really good uh, oh, just just out of curiosity have they been trained and uh chainsaw Yes. Management. Yes. All all the fire staff are generally chained in chainsaw use anyway. Um, it's more focused on uh, entry and venting of burning structures. Um, but we do we do end to um, we set up training sessions for all of the fire staff uh, for all of their three shifts. I think we ended up doing nine nine or I think it was nine trainings that we did with uh, fire department staff specifically for chainsaw use in trees. Um, and we actually ended up buying and providing some uh, tree-specific PPE uh, for them to use to keep on their emergency call trucks uh, mm -hmm. for that. So, yeah, we, we did a good bit of cross-training before we just cut them loose on that. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. <laughs> and they were happy for it, too. I mean, they, they were glad yeah. to have the tra extra training and uh, extra professional development for them. And it's, it's been a win-win for all of us. Yeah, great. Yep. Great initiative. Yep, yep, it was. It has been a has been a very good one. Um, hopefully, it will continue to be so. Um, uh, last one here: uh, developing strategy for wood waste management. There, um, I've been working with the city attorney's office. Um, all of our wood chips that we our crews process in house, um, as well as uh, wood chips produced by our contractors, uh, 
the removing trees for us under contract. Um, we've been stockpiling those on a city property. Um, and uh, I've, been work- I've been very recently working with the city attorney's office to see if we can uh, create a process uh, and a program basically for allowing the public to come into the property um, on certain scheduled uh, days and times uh, and allow free access to that wood mulch. Um, it would just be uh, come in, uh, no equipment, load it by hand, free, first come, first serve on certain days that we allow the property to be open. Um, just come load it up and take what you want. Um, but we're still, so I'm still working through that process. I got to gotta get some other things off my plate and then I'll get working on uh, an actual uh, written framework and guidelines for what that's going to look like. But so far we do have uh, support from the city attorney's office to, to do that. So that'll, that'll be a huge help um, to help us reduce our expenditures for getting rid of wood waste and also be able to provide that back to the community at no cost. Right. So have, have you reached out to the uh, landfill? Um, because they give away free compost. So I don't know if you wanted to, to uh, the, align, yeah, align the, the, the landfill, we had some contract with the landfill here a few years ago and there were some, some issues, yeah. I guess, whether uh, I don't know all the ins and outs, so I won't speak to it too much, but we were taking stuff to the landfill, yeah. but that's, uh, further that we have to haul the material right. <laughs> um, and then it's, it's creating a different product uh, that may not be in quite as big of demand as uh, just wood mulch. Gotcha. So it's no, what, it, it can be I, worth looking into, but right now we're not, we're not to that point. You, you might want to talk to them about their process and rather, rather than saying deliver it to the, to them. I mean, the um, landfill gives away compost. So, you can potentially follow their same process of giving away wood mulch as as the landfill does, because you got yeah, you got you got to call them to make an appointment to get uh, the compost. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. their process because they're doing compost. There's a lot of uh, regulations, environmental regulations and stuff around compost. Um, it's both actual real compost is a lot more involved um, yeah. than just giving away free wood mulch saying, "Hey, come get it." Um, gotcha. So ours is going to be a much more, much more simple process than what they have to go through out there. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, we're going to continue to want to give it away, aren't we, during our tree distributions? Yes, and we will. We will absolutely continue that. That, that will be a continue been, for sure. Been, it's like the pile just keeps growing. I've been stockpiling chicken feed bags for people to fill. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> okay. What we that, that, that was it. Uh, That's it. Any more questions? Now, I, I noticed that there were some of the uh, items that were, the, you know, I mean, for example, nine and uh, that sort of thing. Are, are these other ones uh, more longer term strategies? Yes, the the other ones they're they're not being ignored. Um, I was just giving an update on stuff that we've been able to accomplish so far um, that we actually have some can show some results with uh, currently uh, the other items, like I said, they're not being ignored. They're just going to be more long-term or more involved. And we just haven't gotten to them yet. Gotcha. Okay. I actually would like to go back to that last screen and just, um, I had a um, number 10 with the fire department. I recently in the past, I don't know, six weeks, two months had an issue with the truck, um, hitting a massive oak tree and of course the limb falling it wasn't after hours and the fire department came to cut this massive limb off the delivery truck but left that limb like in the driveway to where i had to go buy a chainsaw and cut it up myself was um where do you have a location uh, Page Avenue, Winter Park. The address was 912 Page Avenue. I was just curious. I'm not aware, not aware of that one. That is interesting. Yes. Um, yeah. and I, when I say after hours, our staff's working hours are 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. So yeah. anything after 3.30 p.m. back around to 7 a.m. is going to be after hours for us. 
Yeah, right. No, I don't think. But I'm, I was just curious as, to, as far as the fire department goes cutting it off. At what point does it become the homeowner's responsibility to cut it into smaller pieces? Um, there's a lot of factors that could have come into play there. Um, I haven't seen it. I'm not aware of that particular situation. So I, I don't want to say something uh, yeah. offhand that's not accurate. Um, if it was a, obviously, if the tree limb came from a private tree, uh, that may be the case. Um, if it was not a street tree. Um, I'm also, I don't know, it sounds like there may have been a little bit of miscommunication if the fire department was cutting right. the tree off of a truck. Um, right. With turnover with the fire department, we're going to have to go back in with them and do some updated training because they said they've got some new people in that were not here when we did the initial training. Um, so that's something I'm going to have to work with them on. Um, we have run into some, some minor hiccups, uh, not really issues, but some minor hiccups just uh, communication wise. And this may be one of them. Um, so I'll, I'll have to get yeah. back and see what I can find out about that. I, I'll get with them. You said nine nine twenty six page nine twelve nine twelve. Okay, yep. I will look into that and see what I can find out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else? <clears throat> so one of the other big things with strategy is that i mean i know that this is more of a longer term type fold but um one thing was developing the strategy for managing the urban forest is that um what what type of um progress do you think or is that is that going to be a 12 month 18 month progress or i mean so that you know obviously strategy it would help you know help us focus on where we can push, you know, from a Wilmington Tree Commission perspective. Yeah, I think overall, um, making a strategy plans um, will be better suited to do that once we have a more comprehensive uh, tree survey. Uh, basically, <laughs> when we know yeah. better what we have citywide, uh, we'll be able to put those plans together a lot easier. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a little bit of an out because we're waiting on that, but it's not. It's we we could develop uh, plans for just the downtown area, but then once mm -hmm. we finish the survey, we'd end up just changing those plans uh, because the more information we have, the more we have to manage. Uh, so it, it could could potentially get a little bit sticky if we try to develop too many management plans without all of the information that we need to to do so. No, I understood. It's just you know, right now we don't have you know, we don't have the money to, to finish it. So, you know, the question is, is, you know, let's, I mean, we can put a framework together on a strategy for what information we have now and then expand the framework <laughs> once, once we complete the, uh, the analysis, it's just something that we can, you know, look forward to, to really push, you know, the city to see what we can do to, you know, at least within the area we know, uh, to continue to focus on, you know, canopy preservation or uh, can canopy increases. So I'm just saying that, you know, we, the Urban Forest Master Plan uh, was developed almost a year and a half ago, and I'm just trying to make sure that we keep on top of it. And strategy is the most important thing, I would think, for uh, in order for us to, uh, you know, really jump on board and help push. I mean, from an operational standpoint, our uh, position hasn't really changed um, right now. I mean, it, our you know, life safety, just kind of like fire department, life safety is our first priority. So high risk trees, whether it's uh, pruning that's caused the tree to be high risk or if it's uh, because the tree is dying, diseased, uh, whatever the case may be, and risk of falling, damaging, uh, hitting people, damaging vehicles and structures. Um, the high risk uh, requests are going to be our priority always. Gotcha. Um, so okay. all the information that we got from the tree survey uh, of the 45 limits, um, there's a lot of good information in there that we got for trees that were high risk, therefore high priority. Um, Going to continue to work through those um, and others as they come in. Uh, we just have to prioritize those and uh, just do what we can to try and keep up with what we have right now while we work on some of these other 
projects to get more information in so we can develop better plans and better processes and hopefully more equipment and more people to be able to address all that. Great. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate all the help and, work, and the hard work on this. Yep, not a problem. <clears throat> any any right. questions about any of that? Anybody? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm uh, I'm actually going to have to jump off this meeting because, like I said, I'm kind of double booked. I've got another one uh, critical meeting okay. that I need to need to jump into. Um, okay. But uh, if anything comes up, feel free to send me a message or anything, and I'll I'll get your response. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Thank y'all. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Heritage Tree and Tree Awards. So uh, we, we took a look at um, some of the heritage trees that, um, that we measured uh, last time. And one, one of the trees was on Princess Place, which was um, uh, the tree was uh, Laurel Oak and it was I wouldn't say in great condition. <laughs> and the question becomes um, from a Wilmington Tree Commission, how do we want to manage uh, a tree like that? Um, you know, when we talk about heritage trees, we're looking at, you know, more of um, trees that are specimen that really stand out in the community that, um, you know, show what, what, what a you know tree should be and you know but yet at the same time there's also other criteria from a historical perspective and that sort of thing um my my feeling on this tree you know and i've talked to a few people is that um the tree in prince's place uh probably shouldn't be a heritage tree just by the um, condition that it's in. Now the question becomes, should we also consider other considerations to it or not? Um, you know, just when we were talking to the owner, the owner was also very concerned about her house and her house was under is if depending upon what bridge option they choose, her house is going to be removed if they have the larger bridge option. So she also wanted to get designation of this tree to be a heritage tree. But yet at the same time, the condition of the tree is, um, is not what I would say in a uh, very good condition. Um, and so this homeowner nominated it. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, you know, I, I understand, you know, the tree's been there since, you know, before the house was there. So uh, the question becomes, should this be a tree that we consider as a heritage tree or not? I'm open to suggestions or thoughts or comments. I mean, there's the rot right through the center, it looks like, so. Uh, rock? Rot. Oh, rot. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. I was I was just going to say, uh, with last week, or not last week, the last meeting when I said, you know, I wanted to vote that it would be a heritage tree. And then I looked closer at the criteria that they, they're, they're supposed to be in pretty good condition. But then a couple meetings before that, there was someone that had a concern that if something's a heritage tree, they thought that it meant it was going to be protect, protected. And maybe that was why this lady, you know, also given her concern with uh, her, you know, house uh, being where the bridge is going to be. I don't know if it, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell these people, you know, you're just nominating it as a heritage tree. It's not going to be protected and it doesn't look good. But uh, I don't know if there was a physical pamphlet or, or thing that they could see that you know would help them review if their own tree is worthy of being a heritage tree i don't know but uh in general i was also going to say that i guess i would also rescind uh my vote for it being a heritage tree 
Matthew, thank you for those comments. Really appreciate it. And yeah, so the thing is with heritage trees, they are, they are not protected. They are recognized. But if someone, if the next owner comes in and <clears throat> buys the property, and even if this wasn't in the bridge location, that owner could potentially take down this tree. So just because it's a heritage tree doesn't mean it's protected for the rest of its life. So, um, and that goes into um, the legality of private property and private rights and that sort of thing. So I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know how things go like that, but um, yeah. Uh, but the heritage tree program does not, um, what it does, it recognizes the tree, but ultimately it's up to the individual who owns the tree, what they do with it. So, uh, and if the ownership changes hands, then that could also change the owner's view on the tree. So, but my, my suggestion on this is that we don't recognize this tree because of the condition it's in, but I'll, Anybody else have any other comments? I'll be more than happy to hear them and, you know, see if, see if it, if your thoughts um, persuade otherwise. Since I moved here, my understanding is laurel oaks are much more shorter lived, although they do have about a hundred year lifespan compared to a live oak that can be 300 plus years. And the reason being is the wood rot, interior wood rot. So, I think it's fine to not establish this. Uh, I don't know what your criteria is for actual longevity and health of trees. And if the laurel oak has wood rot, it's going to die anyway. So I think it's, I think that's a good enough reason to not give it the award. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so, and then the next tree which one? The one on Princess Place. Sorry. What, what, what was the one? It's on Second Street. Second Street. Wow. Okay. So this, <clears throat> this is the other tree that we measured. And that's the tree <laughs> that it looked like at the time I measured it. <laughs> yes, I do not have the post pictures. Yeah. It's enormous. But, yeah, it's it's enormous. And but if if we take a look at it, the post pictures, one? that whole limb is gone. Wow. <clears throat> the property owner who uh, the property owner in the White House came in and cut the limb mm -hmm. down. So, mm -hmm. and that that limb went out about what was it, forty feet or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. I would have pushed the building over instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if you go now, the other thing is that the brick building is no longer there. They demolished the brick building and uh, they're in the process of redeveloping the site, but they're maintaining the tree. The, the people who own that site are very much uh, in love with the trees there. So they have yeah. one heritage tree already yes. on this property. They the have one side. heritage on oh. the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the address? It's the old bargain box. It's um, 4213 Princess Place. Princess Place, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Soon to be Urban Baths. Yes, it's going to be a spa. <laughs> so oh, the really? Brick, okay. The brick bargain box is gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yes. Yep. Here forever. Yeah. So now it's going to be a spa. A spot? Spa. spa. Oh, a spa. SPA. Oh, okay. <laughs> I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what they're having there at the spa, but yeah. Yeah. So, it's on the tree. so when you're looking at that particular photograph, is it that low hanging? No, it wouldn't be that one. They cut no, off. It's the one coming towards us. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, that one. Mm -hmm. There's a yep. chunk right here. Yep. It's cut it's off a right really there. really thick limb to cut. That is huge. Yep. So anyways, um, my, my recommendation would be to um, put this up for a heritage tree. 
but I'll leave it up to everybody else to decide. Um, and again, to Matthew's point, this doesn't protect the tree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Here are the measurements. Yep. I mean, the one side had a 60 foot crown spread. Mm-hmm. So it went out all the way 60 feet. <laughs> Why did they take the limb off? It was hanging over their house. Hanging over there. Like house. directly over their roof. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So my recommendation is to go forward with this heritage tree. Anybody else have any comments, thoughts, questions? All in favor? All opposed? Mm-hmm. Anybody? All in all favor. favor. Okay. Okay. I agree. Okay. All right. So we'll move forward. And then do we have any additional applications? We have one that has come in that we haven't reviewed yet. So we will need to organize a time to go visit. And this is actually the tree I was speaking of. Oh, it was? Oh, that was cut. Yes. So one of the limbs was cut? Um, Is it this one? (laughs) It wasn't cut Mm -hmm. as the truck was coming down the street. I can't even tell. It knocked a huge limb off. Oh. Oh, I guess these are pictures she, um, mm-hmm. okay. So how yeah, these came with the application. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay. And, you know, quite frankly, um, I mean. Go back to the other tree. The picture mm-hmm. right there. I'm, I, I'm not even sure if how much of that tree is not on city right of way. I know that, you know, our property is three lots in the Mm -hmm. coming back one, two, three, five, four, five lots. I don't know. And it's, you know, we've been there over a hundred years. So I don't know about that tree, but it's a gorgeous tree. It seems to be in really good shape and, and healthy. But but what we were so concerned about, I'm just shocked that this is here. I didn't expect this. Um, the, the trucks had come up and down that street because um, Molly Pitchers is at the end, if you are familiar with that restaurant. It, you know, just tears it up. Well, so from a city perspective, mm-hmm. um, a fire truck or a garbage truck has to have access. Right. So therefore, the city can come in and trim that tree in order to provide access for the fire truck mm-hmm. because it's actually overhanging the city street. So oh. anything over the city street totally is is actually the city mm-hmm. can come in and then take take care of it. Mm-hmm. So, I uh, mean, but again, I, uh, and again, it all depends upon where it's on the priority list of mm-hmm. the city. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. But no. Okay. So uh, the next next item on our agenda is to set up time, and I'll uh, get the group together to go measure the tree. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and if anyone new wants to come measure yep. a tree, we would love to have you. Yep. <laughs> I really like to come out. I think. Give me all that. I, I would be interested in doing that. That would be interesting too. Yeah, just uh, send me uh, an email with a little bit of notice, and uh, I'll try to be there. Yeah. Great. Do you need to go to the restroom, Kate? Or? No, I had to shut my phone off. I just remembered I had not shut it off. It's very <laughs> All right. So we'll set up a time probably sometime next week to do that and or the week after, depending upon whatever everybody's schedule is. Um, and uh, usually we we present this when to the council? Again? Was May. It? May. So we present all the trees to the council in May. So, uh, and then anything we can do to continue to promote the heritage tree program so that we get more trees in the program, I think is uh, very beneficial. Do we, I might've asked this last month and I apologize. Um, Do we have any trees in the heritage tree program that are on county property already? Uh, Uh, Because I want to nominate that Willis to know, but I'm Mm -hmm. I'm really loathe it. Wait into the bureaucracy that I know that that will. 
Yeah, we'd have to have the county's permission to do it because you have to have the property owner's right. permission yeah. to do it. So but no, no other yeah. trees have ever been nominated. For I'm not sure. I'd have to look through our okay. our map. I thought maybe there was a map for doing that. There, there is, is a map. There is. Yeah. Oh, there is. Yeah. There's yeah, on the city. city We're approaching the county. No, no. There's oh, a map yeah. getting county to sign off on it. There's a map of the uh, oh, heritage, heritage trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah. you know about that. Yeah. All right, cool. I just hope. I won't show that. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's on our website. Okay. All right. So no. Okay. So we'll send out a note to everybody, uh, find out their availability, and um, we'll get whoever wants to come measure. We can have a, a, a measuring party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next item is the strategic planning committee updates. Um, so. This, this was done almost two years ago, the strategic plan. And I think what we really want to do is um, starting the beginning of next year is to go back and update our, our work, our strategic plans and work plans just to um, make sure that we're all aligned on, on what we want to do and what our goals are, uh, because we've had a change in uh, the, the commission and that way we can uh, make sure that uh, we get a lot of buy-in from the current commissioners on what they want to do and how, how to support moving forward. But I mean, our previous um, plan was ed to educate all groups on how tree ordinance work by end of fiscal year. Well, uh, the 2025, it was actually sooner than that, but we, we yes. haven't, done that yet so um, how much of that can we conclude include in our planned community meeting in early january we might be able to cross that off your list by yep. just adding it to the yeah, haley's you have that was mind exactly already yeah perfect. because we're already making handouts for that so if we can also add them to the tree commission site and bring them to any events going forward that kind of checks that we box. need to pull you more into the planning on that tom so you know sure Okay. Uh, the, to January. That's yeah, right. yeah. yeah. The other thing is, is we're also going to have an Oli or Ali presentation, right. yes. the twenty seventh of February, which we can also help educate people on right. land development codes. But my hope is that we get it ready for the meeting in early January, and then you have what you need for right. the Ali presentation, presentation at the end of February, right. versus the other way. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, we have two areas where we can look to continue to focus on educating um, our our public on tree ordinances and enforcement. So thank you, Laura. So, Haley, since you're coordinating all this, I, I'm just going to trust that you're going to keep that in mind as you, you, you work with Dylan on what you guys are presenting. Okay, cool, cool. Hey, Tom, I have a request. I have to leave at 1045. Yep. So can I give sure. a report? Yeah, go ahead and do it now. now. Right? Yep. Okay. Um, I just wanted to report that the Tree Stewards Program held its fourth and final class uh, this past Saturday. Um, wanted to thank the city for the use of the MLK Center. And Aaron, he's not here, but um, they also brought trees at one point that let us prune. Um, we have about 22 new tree stewards. And we are going to be, uh, we're going to have a giant tree steward meeting on October 26th to, uh, to talk about how we're going to deploy over the winter, which uh, we didn't deploy over the winter last year. So this will be new for us. Um, in terms of the Williston Oak project, finally got traction on that. We're going to be working with the AIG um, students at Williston Middle School. Um, the actual acorn harvesting is this Thursday at 10 o'clock. Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> so if anybody would like to come out, and uh, I think the Williston Alumni Association is going to say a few words. Um, it's kind of last minute just because of the uncertainty around when the best time to harvest the acorns is. So I would have liked to have had much more notice, press releases, all that stuff. Um, but anyway, it, um, anyway, tomorrow at 10, if you can, uh, that would be great. Um, we received two grants over the last month, one from the Landfall Foundation, one from uh, the Master Gardeners for $3,000 a piece that uh, go for planting trees in the right-of-ways. I have submitted all the forms when I submitted those grants originally. So- um, Are you waiting on us? No. Okay. No, I'm just, uh, in case, well, Aaron's not here. Um, uh, I just wanted to let you know I filled out all the forms as we're supposed to do. We haven't always done that in the past. Um, 
I went out and met with uh, Laura Trivet last week regarding Market Street Trees and their care. Um, I don't know where the city is in the contractor process, but um, I have two comments on that. One, there is really no established neighborhood organization that we can just plug into. Uh, like I was sort of hoping, we're going to have to sort of create that organization. So it's going to be a little bit more work if we want to do it. I don't think it's impossible, but it's just going to, it's just not as easy as I thought it might be. The second thing was we went out there to look at um, where the trees were going and sort of assess. And I have to say that tr the city did a pretty good job of grinding those stumps because I thought it would be very obvious where those trees were. Yeah, that's fine. And it's not obvious at all. No, so I need to really go back good. with the map next time. And it do looks that. really good. Um, we have two upcoming events, one on November 2nd, which is our uh, tree distribution in Regalwood. And then on November 10th, um, we are having a uh, planting of probably 30, 40 trees um, with Audi Cape Fear. And we'll be planning on the properties of nonprofits that they partner with, a uh, big one being the Plastic Ocean Project. And a lot of their trees will go out in the New Hanover County, New Hanover County landfill. Franz Forest. Yes. Um, and then the last thing is I circulated a proposal to the city. Um, Sally, Aaron, um, copy Tom, um, about regarding or small tree plantings. Um, there's a lot of evidence that small tree plantings are uh, more successful than larger tree plantings. And so I would like to test that. It also has the potential to be much more logistically efficient um, in terms of getting trees to the site. Um, we can deploy smaller teams. It doesn't necessarily have to be the city picking up these trees and putting them out. We could sort of have these like guerrilla marketing or guerrilla planting teams that might go out with 10 trees in the back of a truck with a bunch of mulch and knock them out. And so um, they're easier to care for. Um, we also don't have to wait for big grants to come along. If we get a small grant for a few hundred dollars, we might be able to accomplish something. So anyway, I hope the city will consider it and give us permission to do that. Um, we have small trees are less expensive. Uh, we also have a seedling program. And this time next year, we might have a number of small native seedling trees that we can plant. Um, we would still go under, it would still undergo all the same processes with the city in terms of approval of both the site and the species. Um, but anyway, that is all I have. Does anybody have any questions? You know, to me, this MOU is the elephant in the room. There's an elephant in the room? <laughs> <laughs> Um, in terms of a small tree planting, since I've planted so many trees in my mm -hmm. lifetime for municipalities, um, I often do bare rooted. The caliber can be a little bigger than on a smaller tree. The problem sometimes I've found with smaller trees is the vandalism because they're easier to right. rip out, to tear, to hit, to destroy. And I've had a tremendous success with bare root which is lighter weight and more like small trees, more quickly and readily uh, growing than trees that have been grown in pots or, or bagged and burlap. And, um, and, and, yet, and yet, in spite of a lot of planting of bare-rooted trees that are about one, one and a half inch caliper, um, I have found that smaller trees grow so much more readily so much more quickly, so much more rapidly than any larger tree because the roots are cut and everything with the larger trees. And, oh, wow, you, you will find in a couple of years, they will catch up to the one to one and a half to two inch caliper. So I think it's very wise. I just, the only thing I think the city might do is say, well, they're vulnerable. Right. And right. We, there are a couple, we have to do things a little bit differently. In addition to the obvious one that uh, it requires a smaller hole, um, you know, uh, we're proposing that trees have a pole next to them so that they're easily demarked. Um, we also uh, recommend that they have a uh, small tube put around the base of the tree to prevent them from getting weed whacked or accidentally run over and then uh, an obvious mulch barrier. Um, but, you know, the evidence that uh, Project Panda, which is a nonprofit in Raleigh, um, they've, they've been pioneering this model. They find that these young these younger trees catch up to the 15 gallon trees as quickly as five years, usually over 10 years. And the other thing I'll note is that um, with these larger trees that we plant, um, they need to be transported. And we often find that the, um, the leader has been cut. So the leader has been cut one, maybe to fit them on the truck, but also to give the tree a bushier experience, a bushier looking experience or uh, appearance um, so that they're more easy or more readily 
So. Well, Dan, with all putting a pole in the ground and then putting something around it to pre protect it from weed whacking, yeah. you have to go back in a few years and remove all that, right? Yes. And so it's, it's the same model. We're, you know, we're sticking trees, right? We're sticking our larger trees right now, fully aware that we're going to need to go back go and uh, remove the arbitrage in a year or so. So you're right. That's going to be part of the job of the tree stewards is to remove all that stuff as the tree needs it. I support it. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy for the questions because yeah. sometimes there's something I didn't realize before. So, all right. Um, thanks, Dan. Yes, yeah, sure. So going back to strategic plan resource commitment, <clears throat> I mean, that's focused on the urban forest, the urban forest master plan, which we talked about previously. So um, thank you, Sally and Aaron, for the updates um, and uh, let us know what else we can do to help support in that area. Um, community education. Um, this is an area that uh, I know that we've been working on as far as native, the native trees or flowering trees or trees that we have. Um, what we've done is uh, I'll turn it over to Haley and Kate and talk about that. So. Yeah, I turned some of Kate's notes into something more graphic, which can be found on the drive. And so now I have Kate reviewing them and it sounds like uh, we need to go back there and work on the notes so that we're hitting the right points on the notes. Because I was just pulling what I thought might be important, but um, I definitely want to hear more from Kate about what notes should be included since she's the expert and I am not. <laughs> Do you want to show the team uh, one of them? A different one. Yeah, so they're, the notes are really short, um, but it sounds like maybe I didn't get the most important part. So I think we're going to work on get, hitting the right notes. Also, I had thank you, Haley, for doing all this work. It's just wonderful, first of all. And second of all, uh, because we have the new concept of 10 best um, and the head and the heading, like with flowering trees, mm -hmm. um, it says native. Flowering trees. So I guess, I guess that's just fine because they're delineating in the headline what we're doing, and underneath it it says ten best. But in 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 discussing that, I unfortunately couldn't unmute myself last week, last month uh, during the meeting. Um, some people recommended ranking the trees, and I was curious if those people that recommended that would give me their thoughts and their criteria for the ranking concept. Um, who who wanted that? Well, I mean, the thing is, we we initially we were saying, well, let's have the top ten trees. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as ranking them, um, I don't remember the conversation around that. It was my suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Um, we all know that there's an obvious ranking of these trees, which tree it already has. happened because no, no, some I mean, of them were twenty for each yeah. for each category. It was yeah. twenty to thirty. And it was already ranked by reducing that. And that was even reduced. Those 20 or plus trees were reduced. And now we reduced it enormously to get 10 best. So what do you, what do you share? So I, was, I was just starting to say, I was, I was trying to make a joke about the trees obviously being ranked. It's, it's of course, it's a subjective conversation. Um, the idea behind the ranking of the trees is just to create public discussion. And debate. So whenever you have, I mean, I'll just take top 10 football teams, right? Ranking in the country, people are always debating those trees. So I thought it would be amusing to rank the trees and have the public sort of weigh in, maybe, maybe even have like a vote. So um, this might be a E2 sort of idea. Um, but anyway, when we originally talked about ranking the trees, it was not only to say, okay, this is the best oak for you know, for whatever, um, but also so that people could sort of debate that, uh, debate it a little bit. I really love I that know. idea of like having that that as a as a voting contest, right? Um, and then everybody, we could even try to recruit like people to do short little clips to to give a a pitch for their tree of these top ten. I like that idea a lot. Well, 
I think one of the things I really care about is getting this whole thing done. We weren't able to, in Fire in the Pines, have any handouts because you all wanted to rank it. So I'd suggest in the next month, you all rank it. And based on what, I have no idea because my ranking has to do with, you know, what are the best, very best trees, let's say with flowering trees, what are the very best in terms of three seasons? You know, how does it look in the fall? How does it look in the spring? Does it have fruit? Um, and all these variables, and I don't know, you're gonna rank it on an, a concept, an opinion of what you think about a tree. Uh, it's so, not a football team. These are living No, things. no, I, I don't mean, I, so this is the marketing side of me coming out. It's part of this goal, this communication is to create public discussion. Like I said, this may be a V2 version of, of, of what we do with these ranking lists, but there's a difference between um, 10 best and top 10. And so I think that's where we're getting caught up right now. I think what you put together is 10 best, which I which is totally valuable and totally worthy. Um, it's just a little bit different than a top 10. And so um, I don't I don't mean to offend you by no, you don't need to offend me. I just would like to get it done. You do it in the yeah. next two months and I'll be happy. Yeah. I don't care what you do with this. <laughs> Um, but I think we need to get them out to the public. They've been worked on forever. And um, if they've been going through many, many, you know, I don't know, revisions. And um, I just want to get it done because it's, it's critical to get it done, not to have it languish because of a concept of wanting to make it modern. I withdraw my suggestion. No. <laughs> so, if I can jump in for a second, I think it's two separate things. Like we can finish them and then have a kind of PR like stunt after, you know, as part of launching the fact that this is a resource, right? So there's no reason to not finish it and then like do the ranking as a fun way to let the public know that this exists now, right? Um, so more of a, of a, I don't know, social media competition kind of thing. You guys are on the same Yeah, page. I agree. I think we edit, finish editing this list and then we get it out there as it is. And yes. then if we want to have community voting based on what we've already put out there, then we can do that. Yep. but we get the information out and this now. is great this is fabulous really i mean what amazing a lot of work on kate yeah that's I mean, a lot of work on kate's part a lot of work and 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 simple and yep. easy yep. i love it i want one <laughs> I, I don't mean to well. jump on you dan but i just know <laughs> that if you put another thing in the way it's not going to get out no we're going to get it out that's fine not, not to out. uh overcomplicate yep. things anymore but uh as someone like me who's really bad at identifying anything that's not a live oak and a law bolly pine if there was a little um perhaps silhouette of the leaf of each tree you know inside you know, right next to the red maple right next to the southern sugar maple of what the outline is because from far away you know between river birch and pignut and hickory they look kind of they're vaguely similar looking but if you had a leaf, uh, you know, silhouette uh, is somewhere in the image. It's, you know, and also helping ID the trees uh, for the public uh, could be worthwhile. But I know that I don't want to, you know, make things less expedient, but it's just my, my thoughts. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I'd have to figure out how, where to find that. Yeah. Or if we already have that information. Um, well, we can talk to the extension service, see if they have it. Yep. Okay. And with that also, it could also be a later add-on. Yep. You know, we put that out, we put this out and make sure it's accurate. And then if we want to keep adding other things. Look, I just Googled edit. the Tula Negra and up comes a leaf. You know? <laughs> that didn't take much effort. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, easy edit. So editing the notes portion, it sounds like, and then adding a leaf silhouette. Um, gotcha. Is that all we? And I, you know, I was. I mean, they, they could be very, very basic. You know, it doesn't even have to be a picture, but literally just like little outlines that look like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, just a quick uh, idea of them. You know, I don't know, just an idea. No, no, thank you, yeah. Matthew. Appreciate that. All right. Any other discussions on community education? All right. So just part of community education, though, is uh, we were at Fire in the Pines uh, last, uh, this past month. October. And, uh, October. Yes. 
Uh, and we had a good turnout. Um, I want to thank Kate for bringing, bringing the uh, crayons so that we could trace leaves along with the leaves. I thought that that was an excellent uh, activity uh, where all the kids could come in and trace leaves or draw leaves. And it was a fun time, just the interaction with the, with the children and the parents. So that was uh, great. Um, the other thing is community education, uh, Arbor Day. Uh, we have to set up an Arbor Day uh, event with a school. So uh, that's something that um, uh, we're going to have to reach out to a school to, to do that. We can reach out to more than one school because we can always do two events um, because there's the North Carolina Arbor Day is the third Friday in March, and then National Arbor Day is sometime in April. I don't know if it's what day it is in April, but um, so we can actually do two schools if we want to, one for North Carolina Arbor Day and one for uh, National Arbor Day. Um, so I'm probably going to need some help there. If anybody could help me, um, we need to reach out to schools to see if they're open to having a tree planted um, public and like charter um, or and, uh, we, uh, what i would say is it would be best if we do it within the city because we're the wilmington tree commission and it's just the wilmington tree commission is within the city of wilmington it's not within the county so i would say just with as long as it's within the city, city limits. limits yes okay yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah um so yeah, um, and then the other the other thing is is in January. What is the January event? And tree fest. Tree fest is January. I reached out to the tree fest organizers, and they uh, would love to have us participate in tree fest with them. And there's a meeting coming up in November, which I can send out to the team if they want to join that meeting. Uh, to get an idea on what it requires, but we're probably going to need to also have some volunteers for uh, the Tree Fest at, since Wilmington Tree Commission will be part of the Tree Fest. So, and what is the Tree Fest? Tree Fest is held at the mall, inside the mall, and they give out uh, um, bare root trees. Mm -hmm. The North Carolina uh, Forest Service gives out bare root trees, and they also give out grasses. Oh, and okay. and it's a free you get them for free and you can donate you know five dollars or whatever but mm -hmm. you also get uh, planning information you get other things but it's uh um put on by um who sponsors it well um, the, the, the north carolina arbor forestry department. The forest department yes yep north carolina forest department does does it so yeah uh, there's a, another setup meeting in November, which I'll send out to everybody. Whoever wants to attend can attend, and we'll move it forward from there. So those those are community education type things that I know of right now. Uh, if there is any other community education events coming up um, that we want to be a part of, let me know. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get that. Um, we also have a new banner that we um sent out to be completed it should be ready soon uh we do have a, a new uh brochure may i borrow this sure so a new brochure that bridget helped us with so we have that out too so um if the brochure we have which we handed out at at the tree fest i mean at fire in the pines so we can also hand it out at Tree Fest and, um, and any other type of activities that we go to. Um, so that's community education. Next, any questions? So why don't we go to uh, Kathleen? Oh, uh, um, actually, I, I would have a suggestion on this. If, I mean, sure. So on the on the salt tolerant trees, we have ginkgo and parentheses non-native. Uh, I mean, it does say it's non-native, but it's and it's kind of a little misleading. Why don't we put that yo palm or something? Yeah, I just wrote down I should put down your palm. Thank yeah. you for suggesting it. I just made notes. Well, I think um, I and I'm going to take off um, self-destruction and talus very because 
um, that is, um, it's, it, my research shows sometimes it's salt tolerant, other times it's not, back and forth and back and forth. So I just, I think I'm, I really wish somebody who really lived on the coast and saw Africa growing there would tell me if it can take the salt spray and stuff. So I, 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 I didn't really think it could, but some of the research I could, so I don't know. So I'm going to remove hackberry and put in your pot. Thank you. A great resource where, uh, is uh, on the uh, Three Alliance website. There is the this Excel spreadsheet uh, that, that, I, that has all these things from, like the salt tolerance is there. So if we can just do a search on on the spreadsheet, then it's going to put out. So I mean, this suggestion. OK. So anything else you want to add to the meeting or? Um, no, it's great. I mean, just be saying. Okay. Thank you for coming, Kelly. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yes. Yes, this is open to anybody in the public. So we meet the third Wednesday of every month, except for uh, is it July, August, and July and December. Yes. Keep forgetting July. <laughs> okay. Um, next on the agenda is officer nominations. So... Uh, next month, um, we have to have um, we have to vote on new officers for the new calendar year. So um, please, uh, we would like to understand what you're interested in or who's interested in what officer position. There's the the chair, the vice chair, and that's it. That's it. So we're looking for. Uh, chair and vice chair. Um, and I mean, I'll be more than happy to um, be the chair again next year, but if anybody else is interested in being chair, be more than happy to turn it over to you. Um, but again, we don't have a vice chair. Our vice chair um, uh, left uh, was uh, sort of timed out of his um, uh, commission. So he left in July. So we're looking also for a vice chair. So um, please, if you're interested in being a vice chair and a vice chair, what happens is um, they stand in when the chair cannot be available. And that's primarily what the major role of the vice chair is. So um, next. Sorry, can I make another comment on sure. that next meeting? So we've talked about, since our work plan is out of date, is doing a strategic workshop um, next meeting after we do elections, um, working on what are our strengths, weaknesses, and what are people bringing to the table and what they'd like to see. And then after that, at the following meeting in January, we would decide on what our work plan goals would be um, and then adopt them by June. Um, is that something the Tree Commission is still interested in? I like that idea. Yes. Well, that's something I'm interested in. I don't know. Kate, are you interested in supporting that? Yeah. Okay. Matthew? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Great. That should help get people more involved so everyone has a stake in it and knows what their role is. Yep. Great. So. All right. Uh, next item is tree planting and stump grinding contracts. Sally, do you have any updates on that? Or the stump grinding contract was awarded and approved by city council last night. So we move forward with um, grinding a lot of the large stumps that you still see remaining around Wilmington uh, through our contractor um, over the coming 90 days, I think. Okay. Um, tree planting, we have a placeholder on city council the last meeting of the year. So we're okay. hoping to see that go out to bid in the next week or two. Oh, great that we would love, love, love to get a winter planting done mm. as we've committed to. Yep. So tech technical standards, public input, I think we discussed that earlier. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the other thing is, is um, just to reiterate, we're having an Ollie presentation on um, February 27th, and it's going to be a combination between uh, the Wilmington Tree Commission and the Alliance for Cape Fear Trees. Um, 
the Ali uh, folks want to know what the Wilmington, North Carolina tree initiatives were. So what we felt to do was to have half the presentation be Wilmington Tree Commission talking about um, the urban forest master plan, the land development codes, and anything else related to the city and trees. And then the second half of the meeting would be the Alliance for Cape Fear Trees talking about their their work and advocacy within uh, the Wilmington, North Carolina um, Not only Wilmington, but also maybe some of the other, other areas within the uh, Cape Fear region. So, um, and again, anybody who wants to help with this presentation, I'm more than happy to get, receive your help and so on and so forth. Uh, so I, I, I sort of put the framework together. I haven't really put the presentation together, but, you know, as a result of uh, the other meeting that we're going to have community outreach meeting on uh, the land development codes and that sort of thing, I think will also help. And February 27th is four months away. I no. can't think that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but it's like they say, five P's. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm really willing to help out with that deck if you want help with that. If you want to send me your framework, I can give notes. Okay, great. Thanks, Bridget. Yep. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have anything? Matthew? Are you all set? Bridget? No? Kate, anything? Um, everybody likes pictures. <laughs> yes. A lot of text. <laughs> Terry, anything? So the more good. Okay. Yeah. Sally? Oh, I just wanted to say thanks um, to Wilmington Tree Commission and the Alliance for their attendance at the North Carolina Urban Forest Council Conference in Hickory. Uh, we just beat the hurricane <laughs> by the skin of our teeth um, getting out of there, but it was a really positive experience. I think there was a lot of great energy and learning. It was awesome to hear about what other municipalities are challenged with and opportunities that are available to them, uh, many of which we share. Um, so I just thought it was a great experience to all get together. And I think Wellington looked really good. Yes. Thank you. Yes, they did. It was, a, it, I think we were all pumped after that. So yes. thank you very much. Yep. Yep. So Alana. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll get with you on, on measuring trees too. So, all right. That's Any last thoughts, <laughs> Kathleen? Oh, I really enjoyed participating. Okay. Uh, sure. I mean, if you want to join the Wilmington Tree Commission, just go ahead and uh, put your application in with the. What's the deadline? Um, there is no deadline. There is no deadline. It's, a rolling it's a rolling application. Yes, we'd love to have you. So. The one um, caveat is that I still have my, I, I used to live in New York and my employer is still there and I do have to go there. No problem. So I have a full time job. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in theory, I, yeah. I should get my desk, but uh, <laughs> I, I mostly I work from home and I have some flexibility. So yeah. I see that there is a Zoom option that is to answer my question. Correct. Yeah, yep. So. Yes. So yeah, you can you can uh, zoom in on 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 all of these conferences. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll adjourn the meeting unless anybody else has any objection. I hear no objection. So so moved. Eleven o'clock, right on the nose. <laughs> Bye everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.